welcome everyone to this video and in this video I'm going to be giving my review of Aladdin 2019 the remake of the beloved Disney animated movie now obviously we have a long line of Disney remakes that have had that have come out over the past few years but even before we had all these Disney remakes came out I always thought Aladdin would be a good sort of movie to remake just because of all the cool visuals you could do the amazing sort of environments the desert all that kind of stuff I thought would make for a good remake now, unfortunately, the trailers for this movie were kind of a mixed bag. The early trailers were kind of mad, the first trailer. Then the first trailer where they showed the reveal of the genie was like, oh, God, this just looks really bad. But then the first official trailer that they showed, really kind of the final trailer, when they showed the whole movie came into, coming together, did give me hope because everything did look better, including the genie, just sort of the movie as a whole. So it did give me hope, even though there was stuff that I still wasn't all that crazy about, like the look of the outside of the Cave of Wonders, and just what they were going for with Jafar, I was kind of like, eh. But I was still hopeful for the movie overall. In the end, the movie kind of ended up being a mixture of all the stuff we've seen. Um, a lot of the good, but unfortunately, a lot of the bad that we did see from those trailers. In terms of the good, what I will say is that the casting and performances, for the most part, are pretty good in this movie. Your two leads as Aladdin and Jasmine, uh, this guy Mina Massad. And a Naomi Scott, you may recognize her from that Power Rangers movie from a couple years ago. Uh, yeah, they're good as Aladdin and Jasmine. They have good chemistry. They fit the roles pretty well. They had the right look, obviously. I thought they were good for what they had to do in this movie. Obviously, the big thing when it comes to the casting is the genie, talking about Will Smith. Now, obviously, people have a really, and of course, that soft spot and just love what Robin Williams did as Genie in that original movie. I mean, if there was ever an Oscar award for voice acting, he should get it for what he did in that movie, what he brought to that role. But to be honest, when it comes to remaking um, Aladdin and just doing your own Genie, it's not about doing an impersonation of Robin Williams. It's just about being sort of a big sort of fun personality. And Will Smith definitely is that. A lot of people, your fears for the genie, Will Smith is good in this role. He brings his own sort of big personality, a lot of fun, his own flavor and fun to the genie to make it a really enjoyable to watch him do his thing. And ultimately, thankfully, the CG definitely did a lot, but look a lot better from those early trailers that we did see. There definitely were a whole lot of scenes where he was sort of doing a Robin Williams impersonation as genie. When it comes to acting all side of sort of manic and sort of the visual gags they were doing with him, uh, you could definitely notice it. And it was still fun to watch. But to quote Genie from the original movie. But never duplicated, 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 duplicated. Genie of the Lamp. Besides that, a lot of what makes the movie work as a movie is that it does follow that template set forth from the original movie. Now, you can blame the movie for not being original and just sort of like doing a carbon copy. And I wouldn't necessarily call this a carbon copy, because if you have a good template there, then you should use it. But thankfully, if you're someone like me who has seen the original a whole bunch of times, me and a whole bunch of other people, and you know that movie really well, they do. there are a whole lot of noticeable differences in sort of the dialogue, the story beats that happen, and sort of the gags that they use to make it sort of a fresh experience for people that do know that animated movie really well. And of course, the songs are all there. And all the songs, for the most part, that you see from that original movie are done pretty well here. Obviously, because of the animation in the original, you're not able to capture all the fun that they had with all the sort of creative stuff they did with those musical numbers, but they still were pretty good for what they were. The best one definitely was A Friend Like Me because of all the visual and just crazy stuff and Will Smith doing his thing. It's a whole lot of fun watching that song in this movie. Now, that's what does work, but what does not work? Ooh, yikes. There's a whole lot, unfortunately. The first thing that jumped out to me while I was watching the movie and coming out was just Jafar. I'm sorry, my feelings from those trailers still stand after watching this movie. Actor Marwan Kanzazi as Jafar, uh, yeah, just too young, just too sort of pretty for lack of a bread of word. Just not capturing what makes Jafar just that great villain in that animated movie. It was sort of his tall presence, his personality, his sort of cold personality, his look, all that kind of stuff, which was just made him such like a fun and just great villain you don't get that at all with this version right here they do sort of sort of a kind of weird spin by making him sort of like um kind of like a mirror version of aladdin in terms of having that background as a thief and some stuff like that that's not really a spoiler 
But ultimately what they do with him just really isn't, just doesn't leave all that much of an impression. And in terms of his motivation, they give him really sort of like a bullshit motivation with sort of this kind of weird political message about sort of war invading other countries, how we should lead, just like blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, what the hell is this bullshit? In the original movie, he was just a guy that just wanted power. He was tired of being the Sultan's second banana and he was going to do whatever it took to get that power and that's what made him a cool villain and this one like i said just sort of the dynamics of his his look and just sort of his motivation uh yeah definitely did not like this version of jafar right here of course when he got jafar he comes with iago and iago's definitely everyone loves genie from that original movie but i love iago just as much just as sort of his personality all that kind of stuff about him the voice acting by gilbert godfrey oh uh, was just such a fun character they obviously they go with a really different approach for iago in this movie making him sort of like a a realistic parrot he's, he can't form like perfect sentences but he's just like talking like how a parrot sort of would talk uh what i will say though is that they did make him feel evil just in terms of the stuff that they do with him including kind of cool scene they do near the end of the movie but besides jafar probably the biggest load of bullshit in this movie is an original song called speechless sung by princess jasmine this song was just bleh to be fair, is the song really all that bad? Well, I don't really know. I've only heard it once when I did watch the movie. I think the biggest thing that's wrong about this song, two things. One is the obvious feminine message, which is just all like, oh, come on, man. It's just all like, do we really need this? Really, we, do we need this? Because Jas Jasmine, what sort of they were going for with that scene? You could have done it without this sort of weird feminist song they had going on. But the even bigger problem is just sort of the placement that it, ha it has in the movie it just comes at sort of like an awkward point where it's all like you know what you really shouldn't have any like people break out into song with this part right here it's just sort of a weird sort of awkward point and when i came out of the, came out of the movie the friend that i saw it with i turned to her asked her i'm all like was it just me or was that speechless song just a whole bunch of bullshit and she was like yep definitely so she definitely wasn't following for that feminist bullshit either because the placement of the song was just all like just not good at all and really just took me out of the movie like wow this is some stinky shit right here but unfortunately i wasn't create all that crazy about the climax in this movie either to me it just felt sort of artificial like okay here's where we go to sort of copy the beats that the original movie did which there was some good parts some new stuff that they did add i did like the new stuff they added to that sort of sort of whole ending scenario from the original movie but like I said, the climax, it just felt, felt sort of artificial. It gave me that same feeling I had when I watched Beauty and the Beast climax, where it's all like, okay, here we go, hitting all those sort of major beats. And I was just all like, I'm not sure how else you could have done this, but maybe you should have tried to do your own thing and not copy the animated movie all that much when it came to the climax. Now, I did just talk a whole lot of shit about this movie right here, but I will say I, def I did have fun with this movie. The, the positive stuff that I mentioned in the first half of this video definitely still stands. A lot of cool stuff. Uh, Will Smith as Genie was good. The casting, the performances were good. Uh, how they do the original songs, like A Whole New World, Friend Like Me, definitely. And even Prince Ali, for as much shit people were talking about early on, that ended up being a, a pretty decent number too. So yeah, all that stuff ended up working pretty well. But like I said, there were some stuff just like Jafar, that song Speechless, the climax, and just some other th stuff here and there that made it not as great as an experience as I thought it could have been based on some of those later trailers that we did see. For the score for this movie, man, this is tough. I want to... I'm debating between a 7 and a 6.5. I want to go 7 because uh, I did have some fun. But just because of that stuff that did sort of bother me throughout the movie, those problems, I got to drop it to a 6.5. But I, I will say that I did enjoy the movie. The, it, there was some fun to be had, but just a whole lot of problems that definitely made it not perfect. I will say that if you're debating on seeing the movie, if you've seen the trailers and you're like, you know what, that looks fun. I definitely want to see that. There definitely is that good stuff there that you will enjoy. But if you're someone that was kind of cynical about those trailers and cynical just about these Disney remakes in general, you probably should avoid this one, definitely. Not going to be the movie for you. Definitely can't top that animated movie. That animated movie is still where it's at. That's just a brilliant animated movie. So much fun to watch. All the elements just come together great. Like I said, this isn't a terrible movie. I thought it was fun for the most part, but definitely doesn't reach those heights that that animated movie went to. So that does it for this review. I hope you all enjoyed and thank you for watching.